Hey everybody, Eagle Run 23 here. I wanted to show you, check this out. Vintage Straight Razor. This one is a Macruer, Germany. Uh, the scales are completely trashed, but I'm gonna maybe do a restoration on this one. This one has, if you see these hone marks right here, this one has been sharpened a ton and the blade tails off right there. I don't know that this one will be usable, but it's super cool. Uh, this one is in much better shape. And I think I'm gonna hone this one and uh, use it. Any of you guys out there, straight razor users? Kinda new to this. So I'm a, I use a double edge uh, safety razor. That's what I've been using for the last good many years, but I want to show you those because we're going to be sharpening those at some point. And then, all right, today we're talking about Air 15s and this is spurred from a conversation I had with a buddy. He says, Hey, I need to get an Air 15. What should I get? Now, I don't know if you're a first time gun owner or you don't own a gun, or if you're like me, you've been around firearms for a while and you already know kind of what the story on that is. I don't know where you're going to fall on this, but I wanted to just kind of get my thoughts out on on an AR-15 so that maybe we could help some people make some purchases or we could um, just kind of have a clear vision because when I started to talk to him, I just went blah and I think I confused him more than I helped him. So there's a lot about these guns. They're, they're a very, um, they're a little bit mysterious, but they're also so customizable and so different and every manufacturer's got something different going on. And it's kind of hard to kind of wade through that with someone who doesn't know much about it. So the first step that I think you need to evaluate is um, what do you want the firearm to do? Is it home defense? Are you going to plink it at the range? You know, are you going to use this thing quite a bit? Is it going to hang out in the safe? Like, is it a rainy day? Like, what's the purpose of the gun? Are you going for accuracy? Is it, are you choosing you know, budget? Um, are you sparing no expense? You know, what are you wanting to do with all of those things? And then that kind of help you guide yourself through the, ne the next steps. So the rest of it from there is, are you going to build an AR-15 or are you going to buy one? You've got to know your limitations from the get-go because uh, you can go so far deep into the building. And if you're not a tinkerer and you don't like fussing with stuff, maybe building is not for you. Um, maybe you just need to buy one. And I have, I, I have actually never purchased a completed AR-15. Every one, well, I, I guess I only have one. Th this is the only one that I have because all the rest of them are gone. This one here is kind of a Franken gun. Um, if you've been following my channel, you'll know this upper and lower were a part of another build. We've ditched that. We've changed uh, almost everything else out. And we're kind of in a different position with this one. But the build versus buy is really a whole set of debate there. Even if you buy a cheap AR, which we can talk about like what that means. But if you buy a cheap AR and if something you don't like is happening, they're so easy to change. Um, even if you're not a tinker, you probably got a buddy that can do it for you. But um, it's really easy to change things out. So one of the problems with the cheaper ARs, like let's talk about like, Maybe like a Smith & Wesson um, MP, um, MP15. That's like a five $600 gun. Even during all this craziness, you can still pick those up for five or 600 bucks. That's a great gun. And if you want to say you have an AR-15, you got it in the gun case, you can take it to the range, it could be used for self-defense, home defense, great gun. There's nothing wrong with that. You will not be sad about that gun. Now, I'm old enough to have lived through a handful of gun frenzies and we're in the middle of an ammo frenzy right now and it, those of you that have been through that you realize that the gun prices thankfully right now gun prices are, are relatively low they're up a little bit but relatively normal we'll say um they ar-15s went crazy um a handful of years ago when there was a different election going on and junk AR-15s were 1000 1500 bucks, And that was really sad because I think a lot of people found they were just buying something to buy it. And I remember, I remember a, a, a guy 
Um, I never saw the firearm, but I talked to him and his wife, and they paid eighteen hundred dollars for a Wyndham weaponry AR fifteen. And now that it's been like eight or ten years, I just wonder what he thinks about that firearm. I hope he's picked up something um better along the way. But what was a five or six hundred dollar gun was super inflated and that's unfortunate. One of the parts on, on some of the cheaper firearms is you have uh, some play in some of the components like this. This may hold your bolt is holding back in the middle of a magazine. You just drive that pin out, put a new spring in, no big deal. Uh, maybe this is a little bit too worn or whatever and it just doesn't fit quite right. There's a lot of little components like that. And that's really the main difference between the lesser expensive and the more expensive. Like a Knight's Armament, they may have the exact same casting that came that, you know, Smith and Wesson or some other manufacturer is using. It could be the exact same, you know, upper receiver mold, but what's been done to it after that is what makes it more expensive. Has it been refined? Has it been fitted? Um, and what sort of coatings are on it? Because these raw um, receivers are available to any manufacturer, then they can go through and put their components into it and do their finishing on it. And that's what makes their gun their gun. You are not simply paying for a brand. Now, there's a little bit of a premium for a brand, but you're not simply paying for a brand. There, that brand is more valuable for a reason. And you really do get what you pay for. I know that's cliche, but you get what you pay for. Every single little thing costs money. And the difference between a $500 gun and an $800 gun could be a muzzle brake, a trigger guard, and a, you know, a different charging handle. So all of those things make a big difference. So for me, I am a DIY tinkerer. I like fooling with stuff. I like trying to figure out how to make it work. If this gun does something funny at the range, I built it. I know exactly what it's doing. In fact, I'll tell you, this gun, now that it's been converted, it has... A little bit of a shake right here in the middle uh, with the bu uh, with the buffer, and I'm gonna shoot it and see what I think about it. But I'm not really happy with that. It didn't do that before, but that buffer is just a little bit rattly in there. But you know, a new spring and a new buffer, and you can change that out. That's a thirty dollar. That's a thirty dollar problem. And if you only paid five hundred dollars for the gun, a thirty dollar problem is no big deal. Now you're not going to have any problems with those Knight's armaments or, you know, um, maybe a BCM or gosh, I'm trying to think of some other, um, POF, some of the other high end manufacturers that are out there. Uh, Noveski used to make some really nice guns back when I was first kind of getting into ARs. I always kind of coveted the, the Noveskis. Uh, every single component costs money. And the fact that this bolt catch maybe wasn't machined correctly, could cause it to malfunction in your gun. A quality control like that on a less expensive gun could lead you to trouble down the road. Most likely it's not because most of these things are all within mil spec and it's all fine and, and good. That's the cool thing about this platform is that most everything works with everything and there's very little differences between you know, the different parts. It's just the manufacturing process, the material used, you know, how, how much time and effort has been put into making that finished product. Okay, so let's say that you've decided to buy. Can't go wrong with that M&P. If you want to save a little bit of money and step up a little bit, that's a fine decision. I fully support that. Um, if you've decided that you want to build, I think that's cool too. And I highly recommend that everyone builds a lower receiver at some point. Uh, it's a really cool process and it kind of brings you an intimate knowledge of the functionality of everything inside um, of your lower. And it just kind of makes you feel like you're a part of this gun. I created it. I know um, I know about it. I know what's going to happen to it. You're really connected to it when, when that happens. So you can buy a lower receiver and an upper receiver really inexpensive. Parts kits, finding things on sale. You could build a gun very similar to this one. Um, for five or six hundred dollars, it's even possible to be lower than that if you catch things on sale. Um, if you don't go right away with a Magpul grip and you end up with just kind of the standard looking one, you can always swap that out later. Um, same with the buttstock, the standard one is fine. Um, if you want to upgrade later, it's totally easy to do those things. So, what are you going to spend your money on if you're going to build? I recommend that you 
Get the best barrel that you can afford that fits in your budget and what your system of use is going to be, and get the best bolt that you can. Uh, this gun has a uh, ballistic advantage, uh, which is um, aero precision, ballistic advantage barrel, and an aero precision bolt. I have the chrome lined bolt. I spent money on the bolt, I spent money on the barrel. The rest of this is a Franken gun. It's literally made from parts out of um, my, my spare parts box. Um, I don't love this charging handle, but that was the only one I had left over, and so we're gonna run it. Um, the trigger group, I did a quick trigger job on it, polished it up, did the springs on it. Again, no big deal. All of this, this whole gun here, as it's assembled, I basically made it for free, other than buying the barrel and the bolt. The rest of it was just components I had, plus the re repurposed upper and lower receiver. You can have a ton of fun with AR-15s. They're such a fun gun and such a great little hobby to start building on. Highly recommend that you jump in. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've built something, uh, if you had a problem with it, and uh, if you were able to figure that thing out. I think when you build it, you're going to be able to figure it out right away. The hardest part when you're building is a gas tube, lining it up, torquing the barrel nut, and then making sure that you've got your springs all pointed in the right direction here um, in the fire control group. Other than that, they're a piece of cake. Uh, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Recommend you get into it. All right, cool. If you have any questions, let me know uh, down there in the comments. And uh, we're going to sharpen up some blades. I, I, I don't know if I should... I should replace this or it might just be a, a wall hanger, so to speak, but I'm excited to uh, learn how to shave like this. All right, cool. Eagle Run 2-3, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.